up till now we studied the radiation characteristics of hertz dipole and following that the linear dipoles we saw that the hertz dipole has a very broad radiation pattern and consequently it has a very low directivity for making the directivity higher that means for making the radiation pattern narrower we investigated dipole antennas which are of finite length however while doing this we found that the terminal impedance of the antenna gets modified so as we increase the length of the dipole two things happen the directivity of the antenna increases beam width becomes narrower but at the same time we start getting multiple beams that means the radiation starts going in some undesired directions we also develop some nulls that means the directions in which there is no radiation and at the same time the terminal impedance of the antenna also gets modified so what we find is that as we try to manipulate the radiation characteristics like radiation pattern the terminal impedance automatically gets modified we do not have a independent control over the terminal impedance against the radiation pattern in many applications we would like to modify the radiation pattern depending upon the need but at the same time we want that the impedance characteristics of the antenna should not get modified we also saw that for a dipole since the current distribution was sinusoidal we knew the current distribution we could find out the radiation pattern however if we take some arbitrary antenna then it is very difficult to find out the current distribution on that but once we get the current distribution on that antenna then the finding out the radiation pattern is a straight forward problem but the reverse problem as we mentioned earlier that somebody gives you the radiation pattern and says tell us the physical structure which will give me this radiation pattern or giving the physical structure can we just say off hand what kind of current distribution will be existing or for a given current distribution what should be the physical structure these problems are extremely difficult or sometimes impossible problems so what we want is we want to manipulate the current distribution because from our fourier transform relationship between the current distribution and the radiation pattern we know that if we manipulate the current distribution we can get the desired radiation pattern so now our requirement is that we must have a mechanism of modifying the current distribution without affecting the terminal characteristics of the antenna and that kind of flexibility is provided by what is called the antenna arrays so as the name suggests the antenna array is collection of basic antenna elements so now what we do we essentially have a large number of antennas whose terminal characteristics are decided by the pre designing this antenna and by placing this antenna in the vicinity of each other and exciting them simultaneously we essentially get superposition of the fields due to each of the antennas and because of the space phase which will be there because of the placement of these antennas the total radiation pattern gets modified so by the use of antenna array essentially we decouple the terminal characteristics of the antenna and the radiation pattern of course when two antennas are brought in the vicinity of each other the terminal characteristic gets modified but this modification is marginal if the spacing between the different antennas which are kept in the vicinity of each other are more than lambda by 2 so that means if the antenna elements are separated by a distance more than lambda by 2 the terminal characteristics of the antenna practically remain unchanged however the superposition of the field due to different antennas can give you modification in the radiation pattern so in fact by using proper distribution and the excitation of the different antenna elements one can achieve any current distribution and consequently we can realize any arbitrary radiation patterns so an antenna array essentially provides 
flexibility in designing the radiation patterns without affecting the terminal or the impedance characteristics. So, now the idea is as follows whatever frequency we want to work on we first find out a suitable antenna with proper impedance bandwidth characteristic. Let us say we can take a dipole antenna and match it to whatever impedance we want to match it to over the bandwidth. So, this is now the basic element which is the radiating element. Now, by reproducing the same element at different locations in space essentially we create what is called antenna arrays. So, each antenna now is a best behaved radiating element at that frequency for that bandwidth and superposition of all the radiations from different antennas of similar type we will get a radiation pattern which will be the desired radiation pattern. So, when we talk about antenna arrays principally there is no necessity of having different antenna elements which are identical you may have different elements one may have one may be dipole other may be parabolic dish third may be something else. However, it does not really give an advantage of using different antenna elements in the array. In fact, it is more advantageous to use identical antenna elements in the antenna array so that your analysis becomes simpler and the final radiation pattern which we get for the antenna array is essentially decided by the array characteristic rather than by the individual antenna characteristic. So, once you have a basic antenna element we worry only about your terminal characteristic and the radiation characteristics are decided by, by array and the basic radiation pattern of the antenna element does not play any role in the final radiation pattern. So, with that understanding then one can say we are essentially going to put identical antenna elements in some special configuration excite them with some proper pattern and this is going to create a radiation pattern which will be the desired radiation pattern. So, let us say we antenna array as we say is collection of antennas. So, let us say we have dipole antennas which could be which could be like that they are located in different locations and each of them might be excited with different different currents which are complex currents. So, this one may be having a current I 1 this may have a current I 2, this may have a current I 3, I 4, I 5 and so on. Now, principally these antennas again need not be oriented in same direction. However, if I do not do that then again we have to do the vector addition of the electric field when I go very far away from the antenna. It again does not give any great advantage as far as the radiation pattern is concerned. So, normally these elements also are oriented in same direction. So, they have identical radiation characteristics as a function of theta and phi. So, in general we are having now the quantities which can control the radiation pattern as follows. One thing is the configuration of the antenna that means the pattern in which the elements are distributed in the in the space. So, we say spatial configuration which one can choose to modify the radiation pattern. Second thing for a given configuration the specific location of the antennas. So, let us say the configuration could be a line a linear configuration, but the spacing between the different elements might be different. Similarly, we might have configuration which will look like circular, but the antenna which are located inside the circle they might have different location. So, for a given special configuration the location of the antenna would be a again a parameter which is in the hand of the designer location of antenna elements. Once we get the configuration and the location decided for the antenna, then for the antenna excitation we have possibilities that is we can change the relative amplitude between different antennas. So, we 
have relative amplitude which is a controlling parameter then the phase of different antennas so we have phase of antenna elements and finally we may have some control over the final radiation pattern due to the original radiation pattern of the antenna for example if i use the basic element of the antenna which is dipole this will have a null along its axis so final radiation pattern also will be having a null along this axis if all elements are oriented in same direction so primary radiation patterns also would have some effect on the final radiation pattern so that radiation pattern we call as the primary radiation pattern of the antenna so we say radiation pattern of basic element now for a given configuration and location we have some given number of antennas basic elements so let us say in an array we have total n elements now having fixed the configuration and the location of these antennas and choosing choosing the antenna the radiation pattern of the basic element is fixed special configuration is fixed the location of the antenna elements is also fixed so i have these two quantity essentially in control or maybe even the location of, of i can keep as a free parameter so let us say i fix first the configuration i choose the basic element so the radiation pattern is fixed then i have got these three quantities which are in which are to be controlled for manipulating the radiation pattern so the location of the antenna we have essentially degrees of freedom which are n minus 1 if there are n elements the absolute location of the antenna element don't matter what matters is the relative location between different antenna elements because superposition of the electromagnetic waves from different antennas would simply be decided by the contribution relatively getting from the different elements so we get from the location we get degrees of freedom for choice this will give me a degree of freedom which is n minus 1 similarly relative amplitude also will have degrees of freedom which is n minus 1 and the phase of the antenna elements also give me a degree of n minus 1 so for a given configuration and basic element chosen essentially in array we have 3 into n minus 1 degrees of freedom that means we have 3 into n minus 1 parameters to be controlled which can manipulate the final radiation pattern that means we can control 3 into n minus 1 features in the radiation pattern by controlling this 3 into n minus 1 parameters in fact if you take an array for which n is reasonably large and typical arrays would have a number which is large we have a very large number of degrees of freedom 3 and minus 1 this number is extremely large so in practice we do not require that large number of degrees of freedom so essentially we will relax some of these requirements for example when we go for uniform arrays we will say the location of the antenna is chosen so the spacing between the adjacent element is same the amplitude also is same and the radiation characteristics is controlled only by the phase variation of the antenna elements as we go for more complex problem then we'll say okay location is fixed but the amplitude and the phase of the antenna are varied and the and the radiation is manipulated so slowly we can relax this condition but to understand how the antenna array works let us first investigate the simplest possible array that is the array of two elements 
So in that case, you will have degrees of freedom. There will be only one spacing between them. There will be amplitude which will be one, and the phase variation that will be one. So we have three degrees of freedom now for a two-element array, and let us see what is the effect of each of these parameters on the radiation pattern of this array. So our basic array we investigate is a two element array as the name suggests this consists of two elements that means two basic radiating elements without losing generality let us say these radiating elements are isotropic that means their basic radiation pattern is like a sphere it is uniform in all direction of course this kind of radiators we will never find in practice but as we have seen even the simplest current element gives us the radiation pattern which is a sin theta radiation pattern which is like like an apple so this isotropic radiation pattern which is same in all direction is an imaginary source this source will will never realize in practice however there are sources which can definitely have a radiation pattern which is isotropic in certain planes for example if i take a hertz dipole the radiation pattern is isotropic in h plane similarly is true for the half wave dipole and and the other dipoles that means if i consider let us say hertz dipole which is perpendicular to the plane of the paper then in the plane of the paper the radiation pattern will be isotropic so in general of course we do not have radiation pattern which are isotropic but radiation patterns which are isotropic in a plane are certainly realizable in practice so let us say here without worrying about that let us say we have the the two radiators which are having isotropic radiation pattern that means their radiation goes symmetrically in all direction so these are essentially telling you the phase fronts which are originated by by these two antennas and as we said there are three degrees of freedom now one is the separation between the antennas the amplitude ratio of excitation of these two antennas and the phase difference between these two antennas so let us say this one is having a current i1 this one has current i2 with a phase difference let us say this one is having a phase delta 1 this one phase delta 2 separation between the antennas let it be given by d so i have a degree of freedom which is phase difference between these two which is delta 2 minus delta 1 i have a degree of freedom for amplitude relative amplitude which is the ratio of i2 and i1 and the distance between the two elements so i have got three parameters to control here the one is d other one is delta 2 minus delta 1 and third one is ratio of the current amplitude i2 and i1 now the radiation field as we know is proportional to the current of different elements so it will have a phase turn which is u to the power minus j beta r which is a distance from the elements and it will be varying inversely proportional to r so if i take the field due to this element then in certain direction i will get let us say take some direction which is very far away from this antenna array and let us say we measure the angles with respect to the axis of the of the array which is this so the axis of the array is the line joining these two elements so this we have axis 
of the array. And let us say the angle which is measured for the direction at which we are measuring the field is given by phi. So, this is going to some observation point. Since the observation point for radiation field is very far away from the antenna, this angle is almost equal to phi. And let us say the distance from this element is given by r. So, distance of the point from this will be short by this which is d cos phi. So, r minus d cos phi. So, this distance will be r minus d cos phi. So, the field which you will get because of this will be having a phase e to the power minus j beta r and will be varying as 1 over r. The field because of this will be having a phase of e to the power minus j beta r minus d cos phi and will be varying as 1 upon r minus d cos phi and the fields will be proportional to their respective currents. So, essentially then we can write down the field due to the two antennas. So, let us say this antenna is 1, let us say this antenna we call as 1 and this antenna we call 2. So, the field due to antenna 1 and 2 can be written E 1, that will be some constant proportional to current I 1 e to the power j delta 1. That is the complex excitation current inversely proportional to r e to the power minus j beta r and the field due to second element E 2 will be k I 2 e to the power j delta 2 e to the power minus j beta r minus d cos phi upon r minus d cos phi. Now, as we have done earlier when we are analyzing the dipole, if r is very very large this term can be approximated by r in the amplitude term and this term which is phase term we retain this because here this quantity is with respect to the lambda. So, this cannot be neglected. However, for in amplitude term since d is much much smaller compared to r this quantity can be neglected. So, E 2 as we have said this can be approximately written as k i 2 e to the power j delta 2 e to the power minus j beta r upon r e to the power j beta d cos phi. So, the total field now which we get is superposition of these two. So, essentially we are seeing the interference phenomena of the waves which are originated by these two antennas. So, these phase fronts move essentially they give you the interference and that is what is the resultant which you are going to get at any point in the space. Since we are again interested in radiation pattern which is the relative variation of the electric field as a function of angle phi, we can absorb this quantity the k upon r e to the power minus j beta r into some another constant. So, you can call that some constant some k naught. So, we can define k e to the power minus j beta r upon r is equal to some constant let us say k naught. So, the fields now can be written as E 1 
that will be k naught i 1 e to the power j delta 1 and e 2 will be equal to k naught i 2 e to the power j delta 2 e to the power j beta d cos phi. So, the total electric field which will be sum of these two superposition of this electric field which is just sum of these two terms. So, I get the resultant field the total field E that will be E 1 plus E 2 that is equal to K naught into I 1 e to the power j delta 1 plus I 2 e to the power j beta d cos phi plus delta 2. As you have seen, we are not interested in again the absolute quantity, we are only interested in the relative distribution of the electric field. So, we can take this quantity I 1 e to the power j delta 1 common. So, we get the field which is k naught I 1 e to the power j delta 1 into 1 plus the ratio of the two currents I 2 upon I 1. e to the power j delta 2 minus delta 1 and the phase term e to the power j beta d cos phi. So, as we, as we mentioned earlier, we are having three parameters to control. One is this parameter which is the ratio i 2 by i 1, another one is the phase difference between the two elements and third one is this quantity d which is the spacing between the two elements. Let us now investigate the effect of each of these quantities, the ratio, the phase difference and the spacing between the elements on the radiation pattern. So, let us say first we want to investigate what is the effect of spacing d on the radiation pattern. So, without losing generality let us choose this quantity i 2 by i 1 as something phase different delta 2 minus delta 1 is something and just ask if I vary d what way the radiation pattern is going to get affected. So, let us say we want to now find out the effect of variation in D, the inter element spacing. So, without losing generality, let us say we take two elements which are identically excited, that means I 2 upon I 1 is equal to 1 and delta 2 minus delta 1 will be equal to 0. So, let us say we excite these two elements by identical currents. And now ask a question if I simply change the spacing between the antenna elements, what way the radiation pattern is going to get modified? So, if I if I substitute this into this, the total electric field or radiation pattern will be this quantity which is k 0 and again without losing generality I can say I 1 is 1, delta 1 is 0. So, this quantity will become 1. So, this will be k 0 into 1 plus e to the power j beta d cos phi. 
we can take e to the power j beta d by 2 cos phi common from here. So, this is k 0 e to the power j beta d by 2 cos phi. So, this gives me e to the power minus j beta d by 2 cos phi plus e to the power j beta d by 2 cos phi. And this quantity is nothing but cosine of 2 times the cosine of this quantity. So, we can we can write the final radiation pattern for this that is E equal to k 0 e to the power j beta d by 2 cos phi into 2 times cosine of beta d by 2 cos phi. Now, k 0 is constant, this is the only phase term. So, the radiation pattern which is the variation of the amplitude as a function of angle phi essentially is given by this quantity, even this 2 is a constant which can be absorbed in, into this. So, the radiation pattern of a 2 element array with equal excitation that means, I 2 by I 1 is 1 and the phase difference is 0 essentially is, is given by that. So, we can say the radiation pattern and we can say this is maximum value of this is going to be 1. So, we can even say this is the normalized radiation pattern that will be equal to cosine of beta d by 2 cosine of 1. Now, one can note here when phi is 90 degrees, that means when I go to a direction perpendicular to the axis of the array, that time this quantity will be 0 and the cosine of 0 that will be 1. So, you will get a maximum in the radiation when phi is equal to 90 degrees. So, if I, if I consider this two element array, from here, the maximum will be in this direction for this for this case, which will correspond to phi equal to 90 degrees because phi is measured from this direction. So, this angle is pi by 2, this is the axis. However, what we notice that when this quantity is multiples of pi by 2, this quantity, that time this function will be 0 and you will have what are called the nulls in the radiation pattern. So, you will get from here nulls which will correspond to when beta d upon 2 cos phi is equal to. odd multiples of pi by 2. So, pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2 that is the time when this quantity will become 0 and we will get the nulls. So, if we can write down here this is pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 and you can put plus minus on this. If this condition is satisfied then we got the null in the radiation pattern. Expanding for beta which is 2 pi by lambda, we can we can write that means 2 pi by lambda into d upon 2 cosine of phi that is equal to plus minus pi by 2 plus minus pi by 3, 3 pi by 2 sorry and so on. We get the nulls or by doing this I can uh, this thing pi will cancel 
So, I can get the angles for a given D. So, the direction of the nulls cosine phi that will be phi cancels with this, 2 will cancel with that. So, you will get plus minus lambda upon 2 d, 3 lambda upon 2 d plus minus and so on. Now, whenever this quantity will be modulus of this quantity will be less than 1, then we will have physical angle phi in which the radiation will be 0 or we will have a physical null. If this quantity is greater than 1, then there will not be any physical angle in which the radiation will go to 0. That means, the radiation pattern will not have a null. However, what we see here is that as we increase the d for a given value of lambda, essentially we can have now many more directions at which the field can go to 0. For example, suppose I take d less than lambda by 2, then this quantity will be always greater than 1. So, I will not have any physical null in the radiation pattern. However, if I take let us say d is equal to 5, then this is also permissible, this is also permissible, next one also will be permissible and so on. So, if I take d equal to d less than lambda by 2, we have no nulls in the radiation pattern. If I take d equal to lambda, then this will lambda will cancel, this will be plus minus half, so we will get 2 nulls. d is lambda, this is plus minus 3 by 2, this will not be possible, so we will get 2 nulls. So, if d is let us say equal to lambda, then we get 2 nulls. If I take d is equal to 2 lambda, then these 2 nulls are possible. By putting this d equal to 2, these 2 nulls are possible. But the next one, which will be 2 lambda, so that will become d equal to 2, 2 lambda if I substitute into this. The next one will be 4, 5 lambda upon 2 d and d if I put 2 lambda, then this will become 5 by 4, which is greater than 1. So, these nulls will not be possible. So, that will give us 4 nulls and so on. So, what we find now that for given current excitation, that means for a given amplitude ratio for the currents and the phase difference between the antenna elements, as the separation between the elements increases, the number of nulls go on increasing. So, larger the spacing between the antenna elements, more will be the nulls in the radiation pattern. So, this is a direction of maximum, you will get nulls which will be which will be somewhere here, somewhere here, here, here and so on. And as we argued earlier when we were discussing the dipole antenna, that between two nulls, the field must have gone locally maximum. So, that means between these two, these two nulls, the field is maximum which is this. Again between these two nulls, the field would have gone maximum and so on. Or in other words, now the radiation is not going in the direction in which let us say we wanted to send which was maximum, but these zones also the radiation is going because field will be going to be locally maximum. And in this case, the value of this maximum will be exactly same as this maximum which is equal to unity. So, as the spacing between the antenna element increases, the radiation pattern gets sectorized in zones and the radiation now starts going in some sectors 
which are separated by this null. So, the number of nulls increase in the radiation pattern and thus radiation starts going into different zones in the space. If we want that there should be only one maximum in the radiation pattern, then the spacing between the element should be less than lambda by 2, so that there are no nulls. However, we will see later on that this choice is always may not be very desirable. You may get some other constraints on the radiation pattern, but as it looks that if we did not want any null in the radiation pattern, then the spacing should be less than lambda by 2 if the current elements are equally excited. The second quantity of which we can find the effect of the radiation pattern is this quantity which is the ratio of the two currents. So, the second thing is effect of variation in I 2 by I 1. Now, in this case we can fix some antenna spacing. So, let us say we fix d equal to d equal to lambda and let us say the phase difference between these two elements is 0. So, we let us say d 2 delta 2 minus delta 1 is equal to 0. So, for d equal to lambda we have beta d cosine phi which is equal to 2 pi by lambda into lambda cos phi that is 2 pi cos phi. I can substitute into the general expression for the radiation pattern. So, we get E that is k naught and again we can assume your delta 1 is equal to 0 and I 1 is equal to 1 without losing generality. So, this quantity then I 1 e to the power j delta 1 that will be 1. So, this is k naught into 1 plus this ratio I 2 by I 1. I 1 is 1 e to the power j beta d cos phi will be 2 pi cos phi. Now, as the angle phi varies, essentially this quantity, total phase of this quantity varies and the electric field essentially is the sum of these two vectors, one is 1, other one is having a ratio amplitude which is I 2 by I 1 and its phase is changing as the angle phi changes. So, when phi is equal to 0, these two terms will be in phase because this is equal to 2 pi. When this quantity this quantity will be pi by 2, this will become 0, again this will be in phase, but if this quantity, if this quantity is 1 by 2, then this will be, this will be pi, if this quantity is 1 by 4, this will be pi by pi by 2 and then this will be 0, you will have a radiation which is coming because of this plus a 90 degree phase shift between these two. So, when this quantity is 1 by 2 that time is e to the power j pi which is equal to minus 1. So, these two terms will cancel each other whereas, when phi is equal to 0 that time this is e to the power j 2 pi that means, these two terms will add in phase. So, what we now see from here for phi equal to 0 two terms add. to give the electric field which is E equal to k k naught 1 plus I 2 upon I 1 for phi is equal to pi 
I equal to pi by pi by 3. If I put phi equal to pi by 3, this quantity will be 1 by 2. So, this will be pi. Then the two terms cancel each other and we get electric field that will be equal to K naught into 1 minus I 2 upon I 1. So, this is the maximum value I will get for the electric field as I vary the angle phi and this is the minimum value of the electric field which I get in the radiation pattern. But the important thing to note here is if the two currents are not equal that means I 2 by I 1 is not 1 then there is no complete cancellation of the two fields. That means we do not have completely constructive or completely destructive interference. So, when this ratio I 2 by I 1 is not equal to 1, that time we will never have a null in the radiation pattern. You will have a maximum in the radiation pattern, field will die down to some lower value, but there will be no direction in which there will be null in the radiation pattern. So, this thing essentially tells you no null in the pattern. So, in general then we can say that the ratio of the current amplitudes essentially control the depth of the nulls in the radiation pattern. As I 1 approaches to I 2 when these two become equal, the depth is full that means we have a 0 field for the null. When I 2 approaches I 1 that time it is null when any of these two quantities go to 0 there is no null rather the radiation pattern becomes isotropic because if I 1 is 0 only I 2 radiates for which the radiation pattern is isotropic. When I 2 is 0 only I 1 radiates for which the radiation pattern is again isotropic which do not have any nulls. So, essentially the depth of the nulls is controlled by this parameter which is the ratio of the two current amplitudes. Finally, we can see the effect of the phase difference. difference delta 2 minus delta 1 and let us say that is given by delta. So, again without losing generality let us say we have some distance d and the amplitude ratio now is taken as 1. So, let us say we take a case where there is a full interference. So, this is equal to 1. So, the electric field for this case E will be given as k 0 into again I can take I 1 equal to 1 and delta 1 equal to 0. So, this will be 1 plus I 2 by I 1 is 1. This quantity delta 2 minus delta 1 is phi. So, we can write here this is e to the power j beta d cos phi plus delta. Now, as we did in the previous case by taking this quantity, this quantity common here, this term becomes essentially cosine of half of this quantity. So, on the same lines we can say now that the radiation pattern in this case will be cosine of beta d cos phi plus delta upon 2. Now, the maximum radiation you get whenever this quantity is 0 that that is the that is the angle for which this will become equal to 1. So, we get maximum in the radiation pattern that corresponds to beta d cos phi plus delta upon 2 that is equal to 0 or it can be 
multiples of pi because when this quantity is pi again the magnitude of this will be equal to 1 so you will get a maximum so this is 0 pi 2 pi and so on. Let us say we concentrate only on the first condition which is 0. So, this gives for the maximum radiation your beta d cos phi plus delta which is equal to 0. So, the direction for maximum radiation cos phi of that that will be equal to minus delta upon beta d. So, for maximum radiation let us say if we call this angle as phi max, the cosine of phi max is given by minus delta upon beta d. So, as we change the value of delta essentially this angle changes for a given, given inter element spacing which is d. So, the direction of the maxima can be changed by changing the phase difference between the two elements. So, if I put let us say delta equal to 0, then cos of phi max that will be equal to 0. So, the phi max will correspond to pi by 2. So, for delta is equal to 0, you get phi max equal to pi by 2. If I put delta is equal to let us say plus or minus beta d, then we can get this quantity as plus or minus 1 and phi max would correspond to 0 or pi. So, for delta is equal to plus minus beta d, it give me the phi max which is equal to pi or 0. So, what we note here is as we change the value of delta the beam maximum direction that is changed from 0 to pi by 2 to pi. So, as the angle changes from minus beta d which corresponds to 0 to pi by 2 when delta is 0 and when delta becomes equal to plus beta d the maximum direction is gone to pi. So, essentially if this was the array as the phase difference changes from delta equal to minus beta d to delta is equal to beta d the beam maximum direction essentially changes from this direction. So, this we can say is the beam direction. So, the phase difference between the element essentially has a effect of rotating the radiation pattern or changing the beam direction of the antenna array. So, now what we see is each of these three parameters the ratio of the currents, the phase difference and the inter element spacing have a very unique signature in the radiation pattern. And precisely that is what we make use of when we talk about the general arrays which is not of only two elements for our n elements and we adjust these three parameters to get the desired radiation pattern. 